Welcome back. This is an Alex training video on using the solubility of a compound to calculate the, the, the solubility product constant. They have told you that the cobalt hydroxide has a certain solubility, that there's a certain amount of grams that will dissolve in a liter. And then they're asking you for the constant, the solubility constant. So I went ahead and, and did what you'll have to do each time, and that's write yourself a balanced equation. So if, you, so if it dissolves, solubility means it dissolves, it dissolves into the cobalt ion and into the hydroxide. And I see here that there are two hydroxides for every one cobalt. So this is going to be one cobalt to two hydroxides. So that's just your solubility equation then your constant is only going to be the aqueous. So you're, you're not going to consider the solid because it's, it would be a constant. You'll just consider the cobalt, which is aqueous, and the hydroxide, which is aqueous. If you remember doing this many times, we've, we have the concentrations raised to the power of the coefficient in the balanced equation. So this is cobalt to the one power, and hydroxide squared because it has a coefficient in the balanced equation. So they're going to give us the solubility of the first. Then we need to find out what the concentration is, what the molarity is, and then use the balanced equation to find out the molarities. Once you have the molarities, plug them in here, multiply them together, and you can get the case of P. So the math here is not hard, I don't think. So let's first of all take what we're given. We are given the, con the solubility of the cobalt hydroxide as 6.4 times 10 to the minus 4 grams per liter. Well, molarity is not grams per liter. Um, remember, moles would be number of moles times equals number of moles times number of moles. Since I'm not given a specific amount of fluid, I just assume the molarity will be the same since it's the same amount for each one anyway. So I need molarity. I need moles per liter. So I need to divide this by grams per mole, which is your molar mass. So I add up cobalt from the periodic table, two oxygens and two hydrogens. And that gave me 92.94 seven seven nine grams per mole so when i divide that out i get six point eight eight five five seven seven eight three four times ten to the minus six molar so that's the concentration that's the concentration of a solution of the cobalt hydroxide Okay, so when you put it in, since we're wanting aqueous and aqueous, it's a solution. So that's the molarity. That's how much it is. And it's very little because it's in 10 to the negative 6. Well, the balanced equation tells me that it's 1 to 1 cobalt. That means that my cobalt is going to have that same concentration. So the, the concentration of the cobalt is also going to be the same. 6.8 eight five five eight I'll have to round that I don't have to round that far I'll round that off later and now I look here and say that this is one to two so for every one of these I'm going to have I have double this so I have to take that 6.88 and double it Okay, so that gives me the concentration of the hydroxide as double 1.377 molar. Both of these are molar. Well, now I have the concentrations. Once I have the concentrations, I can put them into the expression and multiply it together and be done. Just know that 
I have to square the hydroxide. I have to square the 1.3 because it's two, it's twice because it's based also on the, the two from the hydroxide from the balance equation. So that means that K sub SP equals 6.88558 times 10 to the minus 6 times 1.37712 times 10 to the minus 5 squared that gives me 1.306 etc etc times 10 to the minus 15 and they asked me to round to two significant digits. So K sub P is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 15.